I just, I was like, we're going to have to go to a shelter. You know, I talked to a, um, a social worker and then she's like, this is pretty much the only option you have. So at that time, the first time going to the shelter, it was very scary for me because I used to, um, I used to, you know, donate a lot of food and a lot of my nice clothes and everything to the shelters before in San Jose. So for me, it was like, oh, you know, they don't have a place to live, you know, kind of thing. But now myself going into a shelter, it's not that I feel like, oh, I was too good to be in a shelter, but I was like, oh my God, you know, like I never thought I would be in this position and with my son, he's so little. And so we went to a shelter and then I noticed my son had like kind of regression on his social skills. It was so harsh on him and I tried to seek help for him because I saw a lot of not positive changes. Um, I would cry myself to sleep all the time. I mm. cry myself all the time and I felt so ashamed. You know, it, it's the worst feeling ever. And then on top of that, around the time we got into a really bad car accident, we were at the shelter and then we thought, oh, let's go see the 4th of July fireworks. I was like, oh, I want to take a nap. <laughs> but so like, you know, this is going to be my son's first actual 4th of July. So we went uh, to the ones under, um, it's by a bridge. I think it's a foster city. So on the way back, we got rear ender at 75 miles per hour. Mm. But my car is a Jeep. So it's the car kind of went underneath, so it didn't cause a lot of damage, but it caused damage on me. Like I couldn't, I felt that impact like on my neck, but I was so shaken up, shaken up. So we pulled over, we exchanged information. And the next day I felt really sore. A week later, I was unable to walk. So I was not able to keep working and saving money while we were in the shelter. Oh boy. So it was even worse because I couldn't walk. And then by the time I applied for disability and then if I got approved, I didn't know what was going to happen. That was lost income. So that was money I could not have saved. So we were in the shelter. When you're in the shelter, um, you have all these kind of duties you have to do or have excuse to not do those uh, duties and then like come up with a plan to save money. I was like, I don't have a plan. I can't even walk. <laughs> I can't even walk. My partner has slips this and with this accident can't even move either. So, um, so I was like, we just have to follow the doctor's notes and directions. And I couldn't even, it was hard to breastfeed my son. He was really walking. So I was like, oh, I can't even move. Thankfully, my mom took my son a few days so I could recover. Um, but then it was hard. I couldn't work for maybe a couple months. And then by that time, disability kicked in. And then, oh, we can't, you know, back it so long. And it was a lot of political, well, issues. So um, it was our time to leave the shelter. And we didn't have enough money to save or anything. So um, I was like, what? We only have a few money and a little bit of money. And then with this little money, either we can rent another room, try to rent another room for a month and see where the lead sets. Or I was like, we can try to get an RV or something to get a roof over our heads. So we started looking for an RV and everything. And then we were able to get kind of a functioning RV. And it was very little, a very small RV. So we were able to get an RV and it starts like, let's park on the street. I see a lot of them park on the streets. You know, I'm always trying to be very positive and this is gonna work out fine. We'll just we'll live on an RV for a year and it puts us back on our feet. And you know, I started all of these good things. So like in a year, we're going to be fine. And, but then my partner started getting sick. So he was working for FedEx as a driver for FedEx. And then he started getting sick. He had started getting like a boil in the back on his back. And it would just drain and drain and sometimes not drain. I had to help him like drain it and ER back to the hospital. You can't go to work. And then living on an RV is not easy because sometimes you don't have the water. So sometimes he can't take showers. And then I was like, so he kept trying to do as much as he could. And then I was like, oh, what are we gonna do? And then at the time I was working in an office and then I started doing Uber Eats as a second job. And I was like, you know what? I'm only a few classes away from getting my AA degree. I'm going back to school. That way I can just push it. So I was enrolling in schools. So I didn't have a laptop and I didn't have internet either. So sometimes my sister's taking classes online. She would let me borrow her laptop. And then one of his friends sometimes let us borrow their laptop or their Wi-Fi, uh, their little, um, I um, forgot, <laughs> you know, um, but then there were times that I, didn't, I only had the laptop, so I would put the kids to sleep and then my partner was asleep and then I would just go to Chuck Donuts and then like at two in the morning and try to do as much homework as I could to submit the paperwork, go back to the RV at six, get my son ready, everybody ready and go back to work. And so I was doing that. And honestly, there were days I would just wanted to cry because I was so, so tired. 